Studios. I'm Jim W6LG, as you can tell by the call sign growing out of the back of my head. Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. Can you CQ? Three run, Whiskey 6 Lima Golf, W6LG. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf, QRZ Europe. Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. A question that's come up a couple of times recently is which way do I point my antenna? And they want to know if they're trying to work a station in, um, in Europe, which way is it to be pointed? And the answer is simple, but there's some twists to it. So let's quickly go through how you figure out which way to point the antenna. And then we'll talk about the uh, things that also affect beam pointing and can really be kind of bizarre. First of all, um, what you need to do is to position the antenna so that when the uh, rotator indicator, like the ones I have, say north, the antenna is actually pointed at true north. And true north and magnetic north may be different and there's a pretty good chance they are different. So how do you figure out what the declination is? And, and Basically, uh, the easiest way is, and I'll, I'll put a link to a website. You go to a website, you put in your zip code, it tells you the declination. In my case, the declination is 13 degrees. So uh, if I've got a, uh, a, if I look at my compass uh, and I figure the, uh, uh, the magnetic north is here, I've got to come back, for me, 13 and a half degrees. For you, it's likely something different. Uh, there's a portion of the country where the declination is zero, and I think that's a line that runs like through um, currently through Appalachia. The declination changes; it's moving. Uh, true north is actually uh, magnetic north, rather, is actually moving around. And there's a uh, if I can find the link, I'll put it up. There's a NOAA video that shows that declination. Um, doing like a figure eight, it's all over the place. So anyway, first of all, you need to figure out what true north is. You need to point your antenna that way. And then there are some aids that really help. Uh, one of them, uh, one of the best ones is QRZ.com. Put in the guy's call sign. It will tell you the beam heading um, uh, to that location. So if it's uh, a guy in England, uh, it's going to tell me uh, 35 degrees. Um, also, some logging programs like this one, Log4OM, if I put in a guy's call sign, it tells me, uh, it'll indicate the beam heading. Um, Hammerated Deluxe does it. A whole bunch of logging programs will do that, and there are other programs that will tell you the beam heading once you put in the call sign. QRZ is one of the easiest ways to do it. You're talking to a guy, put in his call sign. Uh, there might be a slight bio there, so it can add to, um, to the conversation. The one thing it's going to tell you that's probably going to be wrong is the long path beam heading. Long path is not a hundred; it's generally not 180 degrees from the direct path. Uh, it's usually skewed 10, 15, 20, 30 degrees. And for example, if I'm talking to a guy in um, uh, in Russia and the beam heading is 15 degrees, uh, the long path is not 15 plus 180 or 195 degrees. It's likely 210, 220, and that will also vary just a bit. So there's a long path beam heading that is something slightly different than 180 degrees. Doesn't happen all year long. The best way to find out about long path is to read about the gray line. Uh, find your local DXer and take him to dinner and find out what he knows about long path. Uh, it's a really interesting subject because in, in, in many cases, the long path is the the, uh, the stronger path. Uh, oftentimes, the guy coming in um, coming into uh, California via the long path is stronger than the direct line. And long path is only open certain months of the year. It depends on where the sun is and where that gray line is. There's also another twist that comes up, and those are when the path is skewed for some reason. Um, 
for example, uh, a, a guy in in India here, uh, the direct beam heading I think is 345 degrees, might be coming in with a beam heading of 270 or 220 or um, 150 degrees. It changes. So it, it depends on the time of year and it can be just bizarre. I think some of it may depend on where that guy has his antenna. What skews the signal? I honestly don't know. Uh, maybe the ionosphere, if it bounces enough times, maybe maybe it's not a good uh, it's a good reflection, or maybe it gets bent somehow. Uh, maybe there's some solar activity. I don't have a clue as to how it happens. I just know it does. So, especially for for stations that are about halfway around the world, and for me that's Madagascar. Um, Indian Ocean stuff like uh, Reunion Island, uh, Madagascar is included in that, um, Mauritius, Rodriguez. Some of those, the, the beam heading uh, might be, might indicate like five degrees, but in actuality, the, the guy peaks at a completely different direction. And so sometimes when, when you know there's a signal there and you're trying to peak it up, you have to turn the antenna and keep listening. Um, sometimes listening for the null is a good way to figure out what the uh, the correct beam heading is. For example, real quick, stations on the long path, you start turning your antenna from due north around to, to the long path south. Where that signal goes into a deep null, that's probably the side of your antenna, and you can take that reading and then add 90 degrees, and likely that's the, the peak to that other station. So, Beam headings. Um, first, you have to set your antenna for uh, true north, which is different from, which is likely different from magnetic north. And the way to find that out is to look up the declination, and then put that into your computation uh, for figuring out where north is. Uh, for positioning antenna, if you can look at something in the distance, a, a tree, a church steeple, a park, or whatever, but something where you can say, okay. That is true north, and I can point the antenna that way, and I'm, I've got that. Um, long path and gray line will vary from month to month and week to week to week, and uh, there's a lot of good articles about gray line. If you haven't read about it, it's a really interesting subject, and it's a great way to work the world. Um, I pretty much follow the gray line. I follow it in the morning, and I follow it in the evening, so... Um, I'm looking for DX following that gray line. Um, long path is likely different than 180 degrees. You have to be flexible and turn your antenna and maybe another 10, 20, 30 degrees. There's skewed paths, which can be all kinds of different things. Uh, some guys, for example, in the Middle East will point towards South America. I'll point towards South America, and that's the way I'll hear them. And that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it works. Uh, if you have any questions, um, post it below. Either I'll try to answer it or somebody else with a lot of experience perhaps will uh, will come up with an answer. Uh, if you've enjoyed the, um, the video, please subscribe. I've got uh, a whole bunch of uh, videos lined up to do. Uh, the next one I'm going to do is about plain language and why that's important and then after that, I want to talk about ham radio, and is ham radio a hobby? And the answer to that is going to surprise you, probably. Anyway, thanks for joining me, 73, figure out which way is north, W6LG. Bye-bye.